Milano San Remo, La Primavera, first monument of the year, longest monument of the year, 300 kilometers. And the question we're going to ask today is, could you, yes you, get around San Remo and finish within the time cut? Now, we're going to take the time cut as a nice half an hour. Um, it might be less, it might be more. It says 20 minutes, people finish, but I don't know if that 100% is uh, the case in San Remo. But anyway, when it is Stoyven, we're going to go through that in a bit as well. We'll go through how you win the race. First of all, we've got two people's power data here, Pidcock and Vanderpool. We're going to go through Pidcock's power data first. Um, so just for reference, the sort of person I'm going to say is amateur, 75 kilos, 300 watt FTP, so like four watts per kilo, basically, which I think is like you know, an average cyclist. Maybe people can say it's too quick, maybe it's too slow. But I'd say, you know, that's like a classic. And anyway, so Pickox goes weighing at 58 kilos, might be a little bit less, I've heard he's 57, but it doesn't really matter. So, normalizes 235 for seven hours. That's quite high, so four watts per kilo, that'll basically be like seven, seven hours at four watts per kilo. So in that regard, he probably wouldn't get around in the front group. But if we look at it individually, we'll go through each part. So this is the neutralized section, 70 watts, I reckon you get around that very, very easily. Um, now, the first 170 kilometers, average nor normalized power, 200 watts, which is like 2.8, three watts per kilo, oh no, three, three and a half watts per kilo for Tom Pidcock. So I think very easy to get around for this guy. And you might say, oh yeah, but like, you know, his threshold is four, four, but the reason I say this is because basically, like, you know, he's doing 160 watts, but the point is, is that like it's 200 normalized, but obviously Pidcock's smaller. So like, if you're bigger, if we look at like Van der Poel, who is 75 kilos, then um you'll be able to see like the first bit is like 256 normalized. But I think I think Van der Poel's power numbers is always a bit dodgy. But anyway, I, I think you could get around. I think if you've really saved energy, you could definitely get around. We're gonna come up to the climb now, and the climb I think is gonna be the hardest part for our four per our um our amateur because. It's not, it's not easy, it's four and a half watts per kilo for eight minutes, but you know, considering the threshold's four, I don't know, I think you'd be able to get around this. So I think basically so far, the, the sort of bit along the coast, or getting towards the coast, sorry, I think like this bit here is like 170 watts, 120 heart rate, like real easy stuff. So I reckon you'd get around this. This is where it starts to get pretty fast, 51 k an hour, obviously it's with the descent, but still, you're on the coast now, normalized 245 for an hour and 26. Now that's gonna be quite tough. I still think, though, you would be able to get around because I, I think, like, okay, it's going to be quite hard. Obviously, I'm ignoring bunch positions, etc., etc. But I still think that, like, 240 watts, like, basically, up to this point, like, how hard has the race been? It's been 211 normalized for Pidcock for six hours. So that's basically, like, 240 normalized, probably for our bloke for six hours, which would be, like, what, 70%-ish? I think you could do, I think you could do that. Like zone two, well, it might be tough, but I reckon you get round. So now you basically got 38k to get to the finish line and try and lose only 20 minutes. Now, obviously, this is 46 kilometers an hour, so it's basically about 38 you need to average, which would be quite hard. But I still think if you're in a bunch, like just a small one, you know, like this, the bunch that finished together, most of them have been in the break and 15 minutes back. I reckon 20 minutes back, sorry, I reckon you'd be all right. I think you genuinely you would be able to finish in the time cut. If we look at the climbs here, obviously, like, you know, Pidcock's doing 5.8, but I think, you know, if you did five watts per kilo on these climbs for five minutes, or maybe six minutes, or whatever it would be, I think, I think you wouldn't lose that much time. Um, but yeah, so that's my theory. I basically think you could get around Milan San Remo in the time cut, based on the data. Obviously, Van der Poel's is going to be a bit more maybe informative. His is like 260 normalized for someone who does weigh 75 kilos. So it, it could be touch and go, but I still think Van der Poel's power, he probably, you know, wasn't conserving 100%, I don't know, maybe. I, I just feel like it seems a little bit high for um, what I've seen. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's my conclusion. The conclusion is you can get around. Just going to go through uh, numbers, how to win it. Um, so basically, first bit, save as much energy, 4,700 kilojoules for Van der Poel and about 4,000 kilojoules for Tom Pidcock. Then we've got the Capoberto, um, Roberto, sorry, which is not too hard, 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for the minute here, but overall, it's not really too hard of a climb. Um, if we look at the peak normalized power, this is always interesting. You can see for Pidcock, the peak normalized power comes um, like a peak hour, 
is actually not that high. It's like 5.3 watts per kilo. It's not bonkers. Um, for Van der Poel, it is a lot more bonkers because he's Van der Poel. And um, his is like an hour at 420 normalized, which is, which is pretty hard. Um, but obviously, you know, the main thing is the climb. So then we're going to go to the Chipressa. Um, I don't know why the Chipressa segment is being so annoying, but uh, it is. And um, it's not too steep, to be fair. It's like 4% for 5K. The longer of the two of the sort of two main climbs, the Chipressa and Poggio. And for me, 5.7 watts per kilo is not crazy. 430 watts, like, yeah, it's pretty surgy, but it's not like, it's not, I mean, his heart rate goes up pretty high to begin with, and then it sort of actually settles off towards the end, indicating that it was actually harder towards the bottom of the climb. Like, the run into the climb was almost harder. Like, look, he comes in with a heart rate of 180, and he finishes the segment with 175. So I think the climb was actually probably a bit a bit more chill, less stress as well. Um, and then if we look at into the running, actually, here, 55 kilometers for eight, 55 kilometers an hour, for eight minutes, um, and it's like 300, uh, 350 normalized. That's quite hard. Like the bunch for position, I say this is really like, you know, the climbing is impressive, but it's the, the ability to do this. And then the last bit, he's, he, you know, five minutes for you. Poggio is, you can see, a 3.62 kilometers at 4%. So not very steep, not very hard. In an average race, if it was pan, if it was like a motorway and it was straight, it wouldn't be too hard. But obviously, it's a lot of bends, and this is really where the positioning is so important. Van der Poel was actually quite far back and had to move up, but he, you know, whacked out 1200 watts here. Um, so if we look at his peak peak power altogether, um, you can see he did a minute 700 watts at the end of this climb, I believe. Um, that's a minute and 40 seconds at 8.4 watts per kilo. Now that is, that is serious stuff. And that's the thing, like, overall, the whole climb, you're like, yeah, 500 watts for um, six minutes is like, obviously very, very impressive. And it's 6.6 .6 watts per kilo, which is really good, but like, not like, off the chart or I couldn't do like that. Like I can do 6.6 .6 for five. But the point is fresh, obviously in the last six and a half hours. But the point is, is that I couldn't do this 630 watts at the end of the 500 watts, you know, whatever. And so that's the really impressive thing. And um, yeah, it's pretty mad how fast they're going up. It's kind of 42K an hour average. And it's the repeated accelerations and surges, which is really the most impressive things. And on to the run in, um, in the final sprint here, actually 1400 watts, but I guess He's not very aero compared to Caleb Ewan, so couldn't come round. And if we look at Jasper Stoyven, who won, he was like, obviously, at the bottom of the climb uh, with everyone else, and then was like, I'm gonna whack it. Soren Craig Anderson came across, um, and he averaged 515 watts for this three minutes, which is which is big at the end of a race, especially after doing, you know, he probably did at least 500 up, uh, up the Poggio, so pretty hard, and then 1545. I'm not sure, you know, if that's, in the first acceleration to get away or in the final sprint, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, that is huge, 515 watts. And that's when you realize like to get someone back who's doing 515 watts, you gotta do 600. And that's why these attacks can work because like, you know, if it was 10, 20K to go, then he has to ride at lower percentage, it's easy to get across. When it's 2K left, like if you start to just even do 400 watts, he's pulling away and it's just so hard to get back. So that's the key thing is that if it's a really, you know, close to go like they've got to get straight on it if they wait like five ten seconds so hard to come back but obviously they close a lot in the finale which you saw Caleb Ewan he was very close but often it's not enough um but yeah those are my thoughts on around San Remo you could get around San Remo if your threshold is like 300 and weigh 75 kilos ish um obviously not a front group but you could get around and if you want to win basically ride at six and a half hours zone one and then do 6.6 .6 watts per kilo up the Poggio and obviously like six up Chipresta as well and that's what you need to do and then whack out 515 watts and a big sprint at the end of it. So, you know, not too hard. <laughs> no, it's mad, isn't it? It's actually crazy um, how good they are and how, how good their power is at the end of a race. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video and we'll see you in the next one.